Okay, we're live. Hello again, warm welcome and good evening from Poets Without Borders, a bunch of poets from various countries of this world. And today we are going to read with an agenda. I have always said that we really believe in the power of poetry, that poetry can change regimes, poetry can make the lives of people better, poetry can actually be the voices uh, of different people in the society and every society in the world. And today is our day to actually live it. And I hope dear friends that you will join us and you will identify with all the things that we are gonna talk about and read about and actually maybe fight for, right? We are going to fight for the end of totalitarianism and dictatorship in, in the way in which poets fight with our pen. And we have a wonderful lineup of poets here. We have a star studded uh, list here uh, from Israel to Colombia, to Palestine, to Palestinian poet living in exile in Romania, uh, to the USA and so many poets from India and other parts of this world, Greece and many other parts. So we will uh, you know, introduce our poets and they will uh, read to you wonderful poems, our guests of honor uh, this evening, uh, Dr. Anita Nahal from uh, USA. Originally, she's from India, but now teaching in a very prestigious university in the United States of America. She's a poet, acclaimed one. Uh, Munir Meziad is uh, a, a Palestinian poet living in exile in Romania. Our other guest of honor, we will meet them all slowly, but just to introduce them just a little bit. Here is uh, our friend George, an esteemed poet joining from Colombia, uh, a country that we are spotlighting today, highlighting today. We all know of the protests that are going on in Colombia. And uh, uh, our other guest of honor is uh, Colombian, but living in Barcelona, Spain, Juan Pablo. Roa, it's such an honor to have you all with us. And our guests of honor from India, Dr. Hasina Sultan is joining us from Assam. Uh, Shejal Anthruji is joining us from Kerala. Aurobindo Gangaji is joining us from Kerala again. And there are many others. So hold your breath, dear friends. And let me not say any more. I think I will call upon our first poet for the evening. He's joining us from Africa. He's joining us from Nigeria, again, a very troubled zone, uh, contesting uh, various identities, uh, various ethnicities, fighting for their um, identical, uh, you know, fight, fighting for their, uh, you know, identities in a sense. And yes, there are problems identical uh, in the regions in so many places, but Nigeria is unique in so many ways. And Chika will, um, you know, uh, highlight that in his poetry, a very talented young poet from Nigeria. Well, welcome to you and go ahead, please read your poem. Can you hear me, Chika? He was here all right, I saw him. And uh, you know, this is the thing with online events. So just be patient, you know, he said that his signal always has a problem and he was really here, I saw him and uh, I even spoke to him. So where did he disappear? He's, he's gotten disconnected and reconnected several times. So it might be worthwhile to go on and wait till he comes back. Right. Absolutely right. And there is a guest of honor that I did not introduce. I mean, she has been with us earlier and uh, it's such a pleasure and honor to have Antje Mam with us. She's joining us from Italy where she lives originally from Germany, a poet that so many people know and so many people recognize with her work. 
uh, with uh, the issue of the refugees and other things. Uh, so, you know, we will uh, do a proper formal introduction and uh, all of that when we uh, read with these poets. But uh, let me then ask our friend from China uh, to take over. James Tian is another very gifted, talented poet and uh, a very energetic translator, somebody who loves publishing and, uh, uh, you know, is out there in all these festivals in the time of Corona. He's been sending pictures from Yanan and then certificates to the whole world. So warm welcome to you. And he's on a trip uh, these days, right? He's enjoying his, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, new marriage, right? He's just been married a little bit ago. So there, yeah. So warm welcome to you, my dear brother, James. And please uh, go ahead with your poem. OK, thank you very much. And hello, every poet. Hello, my dear sister. Um, very happy to join, to join you again. And I think this meeting is very meaningful. And today I will to take a new poem that I wrote to everybody for the nature too. The name is Good Night This Night. And I will go ahead. Good night, this city in sight. Nice dreams, my loves and like. Such a wonderful moving this way over the starry eyes. Good time of the new inside, keep my heart on the needy spike. The street is now as quiet as a loaf of bread, but it's few, the hungry soul of people. Oh, what a surprise. Hold on myself, but know the tide, only make better of each one. The world may peaceful and bright. When the night meal is broken, while the suede is white, we can't stop the constant changes. Just in feeling is nice. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you much. You. Beautiful poem, a wonderful poem that really touches everybody, right? All my friends and likes and love, right? And everybody out there in the world, right? So uh, everybody may they be safe at night, right? Uh, so. Today on our agenda, we are talking about things that are happening in Burma, not too far away from China and India. Myanmar, I'm sorry, the new name is Myanmar. And uh, in Colombia and in Palestine and Afghanistan. Um, so I was trying to find a poem on Afghanistan, but if anybody has one, that would be amazing. Uh, so thank you again, James, for that wonderful poem, wishing well to everybody in this tumultuous time, right? So I think now we are going to go to, uh, why don't we go to Colombia and invite um, Lilia, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for, for joining. Uh, warm welcome to you. And uh, she's a very gifted uh, poetess, a founder of this uh, uh, lovely organization. And uh, let me take out her bio and introduce her properly. She's going to read a, uh, you know, powerful poem, and I also uh, invite you to maybe uh, say a line or two if you want to uh, do so. Um, you're the author of eight books of poems, Ambassador of Peace of the Universal Circle of Ambassadors of Peace based in Paris and Geneva, founder and president of the Poesia Sin Fonteras Foundation. I don't know if I said the name right. Um, She's actually a chemist and biologist by profession and a university professor. It's such a pleasure and honor to have you here, ma'am. Uh, please go ahead with your poem. And if you want to say something about Columbia, that would be very welcome. Um, good morning. <laughs> good morning uh, in Bogota, Colombia. Um, voy a hablar en español, voy a compartir un poema en español 
ya Jorge Mario Ángel habló de las dificultades de nuestro país, entonces yo voy a compartir este poema que se llama Puerto Dignidad. Ni callados ni olvidados, no quedarán las voces en el trasfondo de las sombras, aunque golpeados entre el abandono y la lluvia de un mayo que se prolonga en calles y veredas, levantamos el pulso hacia el futuro en puerto dignidad. Nosotros, los ni vistos ni escuchados, los sin nombre, los nacidos de la desigualdad, los bailarines de las calles, los de tambores y guitarras, los cobijados por la nube de gases lacrimógenos, los hermanos de los muertos, los aplastados por la guerra, los sin techo en este siglo abierto, los sin miedo brotamos de la nada, los que renovamos la tierra, los que sabemos de las cumbres de las cordilleras, los que respiramos despacio, cuando la desazón acecha en cada esquina, trenzamos en las manos el próximo equilibrio. Los ni vistos ni escuchados, los anónimos del día, los del rebusque cotidiano, los que surgimos del rincón del olvido, los que portamos la bandera de la dignidad, seguimos en las calles, en busca del país perdido. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, aren't you going to read the English translation as well? Or if you want, I will read it. Okay, I think I'm going to read this because it's a very beautiful poem and I am really lucky and blessed to have the English translation. And I think that everybody should hear it. So may I go ahead and read it, ma'am, with your permission? Okay. Um, dignity Portrait. Neither silent nor forgotten, the voices will not be condemned in the background of the shadows. Although beaten between abandonment and rain of a May that is prolonged in streets and sidewalks. We raise the pulse towards the future in dignity. Neither seen nor heard the nameless, those born of inequality, the street dancers, those of drums and guitars, those sheltered by the rain, tear gas, the brothers of the dead, those crushed by war, the homeless in this open century be sprout out of nowhere the fearless. Those of us who renew the earth, the ones we know from the summits of the mountain ranges, those of us who breathe slowly. When our knees lurks around every corner, we braid the next balance in our hands. The neither seen nor heard, the anonymous of the day, those of the daily search, those of us who emerge from the corner of oblivion, those of us who carry the flag of dignity, we continue in the streets in search of the lost country. Amazing poem. Thank you, Thank you so much. Deserves a big round of applause. It's, it's an amazing, amazing poem. Thank you for sharing that. And such an honor to be here. We are really very lucky. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And now, dear friend, Chica is back. Warm welcome to you, Chica. We did an elaborate introduction for you, and uh, then we found that you had disappeared. Uh, where had you gone? Now, please say something. Say a big hello to everybody if you want to say something about what's going on in Nigeria. Uh, very briefly and then read your poem you're a 
very gifted poet I had already introduced you and you feel very passionately about the way uh, the war is uh, destroying your country, but you do want to uh, speak for the rights of people and for their identities. Uh, you know, there are some problems in your neighborhood as well, but there are typically good problems. This time okay. Um, okay. Uh, good afternoon, poetry. I want to greet everybody in here. It's a privilege to um, be on with. Uh, I'm from. I'm in Africa, in Nigeria, and um, I'm a graduate of English and studies. I studied in the University of Nigeria. I'm currently teaching, I teach literature in English in uh, Beirut schools in Anambra State. Um, well, the idea about uh, uh, this group is very, very fantastic. I love um, how Pankiri uh, is uh, projecting um, the ideology of people to share their uh, yeah, told through. Thank you. I want to uh, members that are uh, make events to happen, and uh, to thank every other person here. Actually, we want if um, I should talk about um, letting my voice known or to be heard by this uh, uh, by uh, our. As, uh, actually, I would like to talk about the, the present situation in Africa, more especially where we have agitation for Biafra, other um, groups, although some call it um, secessionist groups. We have uh, the Ariwa, we have Odudua, uh, and um, currently the People taking the agitation so serious um, worldwide is Biafra. Yes, as we know, Biafra has been um, a country that has, um, you know, warred with Nigeria in the year 1967 to 1970. And um, uh, it's quite uh, saddening that this Biafra um, somehow uh, defeated actually, and um, since then the agitation stopped. But because of the bad governance, some other um, things that uh, uh, sprout up sort of bad governance or incompetence in so uh, that of Biafra and some other um, uh, ethnic national. East, like that of uh, Odudu, people's west, and the north people, the Hausa people, the uh, Ariwa ethnic group, all seem to also live in Nigeria as um, one of the uh, um, uh, secessionists. So that is the problem. Uh, the, 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 the international community is not uh, quite, uh, the international communities are not looking into uh, the, the killings and the brutality that is ongoing. Everything that is happening in Nigeria today is not being sent out, is not being sent out to the world to see that uh, uh, humanity is being, uh, is being included, not to be seen as that we all you know talk about like the recent thing in Nigeria we uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I to uh, talk about this issue concerning us but uh, leave it leave this time so that I will allow other poets to talk thank you so much thank you to you and please now read your poem as well I, I did that. Oh, you did? 
Okay, because the signal was just so bad that your voice was breaking. Maybe it was just for me. So don't worry. Please oh. don't worry. I am not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, able to uh, comment on your poem except that I know that you are a very gifted writer, and I, what I could hear uh, was the repetition of the word Biafra and you know uh, a brutal war, right? Uh, so I'm sure it's a very powerful and a passionate poem identifying. I heard it. Piece. Yeah. I heard the poem. It's very good. Wonderful. Okay. Who is this? This is Munir. I said I heard the poem. It was a great poem. Very nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So, it's my signal. Great. Uh, so, Munir, you're going to have to comment on that poem elaborately when you are uh, put on uh, spotlight as our guest of honor. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for uh, stepping in there for me. Thank you so much. And I think now, uh, why don't we go to uh, Italy and ask Anna Maria Ma'am to read us a poem. Anna Maria Ma'am is again a very senior, a very popular uh, writer. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, she likes to uh, write about various things and is very vocal about, uh, you know, the rights of people uh, everywhere. So, uh, Anna Maria Ma'am, it's over to you. Hi, everybody. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. So this poem um, speaks about uh, the events uh, which happened in uh, Istanbul in July 2013 because uh, Erdogan wanted uh, to have uh, as many as uh, 600 uh, trees uh, uh, cut down in the Jersey Park. And there was a consequent uh, reaction but it was uh, a non-violent reaction. Of course, uh, as you can expect, uh, it was repressed. So uh, the original version is an Italian, but uh, I translated it. So first, uh, I am going to read uh, the original version, and then I'll translate it. So it's uh, Piazza Alberata. Piazza Alberata. Sorgerà shopping center. Scappa la lotta. Alle finestre fioriscono per folle limone e latte, zompa danzanto, collano dalla rete plastiche poche, in sciarpe avverte anticapitaliste col vero in testa, man nella mano che malisti con curvi danzano in, in cerchio, tutti nessuno fissano lo stendardo, alberi in piazza, angeli e rapi, sono stato improvvise, magia turca, quanta quasi speranza, in dura dittatura. And this is the English version. Three Line Square. Three Line Square, a shopping center will bloom instead. The riot breaks out. For crowds and crowds, milk and lemons will bloom out of the window. Out of the web, good read, legs apart, dancing, plastic posture, in rival cars, anti capitalist and vague women. Hand in hand, camelists and curds circle down. Everybody, nobody stares the flag. In the square, trees, angry angels, so sudden statues, Turkish magic, how much semi hope in harsh dictatorship. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. A very powerful poem. Thank you, ma'am, for that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Very powerful poem. I have also had the opportunity of reading it, and I think everybody heard it clearly. It, it just talks about the environmental concern, uh, the urbanization that's going crazy, mm -hmm. and then a uh, regime that needs to be kinder to its minorities, right? And I think that we can say that about very many regimes of this world. People are saying that about our country too, but thank you for that. That was, that was just very, very nice. From uh, there uh, in Italy, we are coming back to India and I am going to request Ramakrishna sir uh, to um, kindly uh, take the stage. And before he actually uh, 
recites his poem. I'm going to very quickly introduce him. He has a, he's a very, uh, you know, uh, senior poet and a very uh, decorated poet with lots of awards and everything. He has 26 books, 26 anthologies to his credit. Many have been translated. He's a member of several organizations and uh, He's associated with the editing of very many magazines and newspapers in India as well. So warm welcome to you, sir, once again. And please, if you will, uh, kindly recite your poem. Thank you. Thank you, Pankuri, for uh, giving me this uh, evening opportunity to see several of my friends uh, in this uh, Poets Without Borders group. I am happy to see Muniam, sir. He I am associated with his organization. He honored me with an award and also he published my poem in his anthology. Uh, thank you, very nice to see you, sir. And my friend, James Tian, he recently translated my poem into China. <laughs> and um, uh, several you. of others, because for the last four decades, I am traveling uh, internationally. Many, of, uh, many, are, many faces are very familiar to me and uh, so happy to be with you all this evening. And um, I wish the Poets Without Borders will do the, uh, these type of congregations more and uh, spread the power of poetry. Today, I just want to present one of my poem titled, To Which Land This Sand Belongs? To Which Land This Sand Belongs? This fistful of uh, earth in my hand, can you tell me which country and land? Take a piece of smile and boil on fire and try turning it into a drop of tear. Imprisoned in the riddle of falsity, when you remain like a tree solitary, never comes true your green reverie. As long as synthetic commodities walk hand in hand with the smiles right, Oceans between man and man never dry. Try ever changing your colors and livery for selfish gains in life movie. You still find your history rooted to earth through your feet firmly. But when you try to see beyond your land, your sky, your creed, caste, and your blood, you sure will find a benevolent great new world waiting keen for you with the stretched out hands. Stop flowing like burning lava of ill will. Try the way a cuckoo's soothing trill that moistens the desiccated desert's gullet and a dewdrop gleams hope on a mirage sill. It's all yours this whole universe, it's all yours, this whole universe, embrace it all between the earth and the heavens. Paint a portrait of a new human countenance that is naive of knives, landmines, and guns, and known just love, love, and love alone. To make at last the humans to win, to make at last the human to win his arrowed phenomenon as true human, as true human. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you to you, sir, for that amazing poem. Beautiful Thank and you. powerful Beautiful imagery of mm -hmm. love, humanity, and unity above all. Uh, Thank may you. There Thank be you. Open, but may, may they be uh, you know, oceans that we can cross and may the love never dry up. And, uh, yes. Every, every land has a story, a sad story to tell. May, may, may uh, time turn it into a beautiful one. Yes, let's just hope the best world <laughs> without wars. And Thank you. Right. Landmines and guns, right? So thank you so much. That was a very beautiful poem. Thank you so much. Now, I think let's go to Brazil and ask our dear friend Gelda uh, to read a poem for us. Gelda is again a very gifted poetess and organizer of, of several events on Facebook, a judge of several contests, 
and it is wonderful to have you, my friend. Please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Hello, my dear. It's nice to see you again. And thank you so very much for your invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a, um, a line is um, about love, about the power of love into ourselves. Entitled Love Giver. If you have love as a guest in your heart, so there will be no barriers able to silence your words, your voice, no borders to prevent your gestures of compassion. Not even someone will be able to steal your serenity. Because love opens doors for lasting peace, for permanent dialogue, for the sincere welcome in love. There is no place for negligence, hypocrisy, or prejudice, because its love, it expands in all its dimensions, making the recipient donor deep transformation in the family and society in the country, in the whole world. It's the power of the love. Thank you. Thank you so. Thank you to you for that wonderful poem. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't know how to comment. I mean, it was just so beautiful. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so very much. much. Art. Yeah, if you have the power of love in your heart, you can cross all borders and get to Gelda and trouble her big time, right? <laughs> yeah, and so, a big, big, big hug. Okay, great hugs to you. Thank you so much. No, indeed, border crossing should be easy, and migrant uh, camps should be, uh, you know, more humane, right? So on a serious note. So thank you for that, Gelda, so much. And uh, now moving on. Yes, moving on. I think let's go to, I think I'm going to England Wales, right? When I'm calling on Sir Richard. Is that your right location, sir? You're muted. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello, warm welcome to you. Such a pleasure and honor to have you. I am in Wales at the moment, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so. Thank you very much. You've put me by surprise a bit. I didn't run to be on so early. Um, this is something uh, I wrote especially for today. So uh, I hope it's up to standard. You draw the line with a stick retrieved as tide recedes, a natural solution to intercede, to be ourselves. Agreeable, equitable, malleable, adaptable, to build a home. Abundance blooms in verdant dunes, attracts a tribe. Scurrying rock pool crabs your side, tender meat. Moonlit stealth to feed my kin, you will not mind. Dawn tracks, Channeling rain, distort the line. Voices raised in accusation, escalation, retaliation. A fist, a boot, a smart salute, a uniform to unify, identify. Fraternity, sorority, invasive, divisive, you cross the line. We fight on the beaches, lines become trenches, defined by location, allegiance and grievance. Invalidate, repudiate, repatriate. Demarcation, polarization, indoctrination through generations, dissent, reject your declaration, erect fortification, 
our claims, our rights, our property, contend, contended, defended our sanctuary with blood and fire, in streams of desire, greed, aggression, rape, oppression, I witness ascension, medals glinting on barrel chests, gesticulation, oration, aberration to battlements, to regiments, dogmatic sacraments, as fiery fists beat down from skies, stained black with smoke, blood and lies, shattering bones and flailing flesh, enmeshed and rent by iron thorns, a killing field of pollution, no, cap no capitulation, no resolution, Decaying meat as tears flood husks of rock pools, drowning crabs with putrid pus and desecration, defiled, reviled, exiled. As we sleep, the moon shifts and pulls, the tide returns, and little by little erodes and erases, awaken to a pristine beach, a divine promise of solace. But that's not our nature. You have to draw the line somewhere. Thank you. Thank you for that very powerful poem, celebrating the beauty of rhythm as well. Very, uh, you know, very beautiful. I think I'm just going to say that. Uh, so thank you, sir. And thank you for joining us. Such an honor and pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for raising your voice against all of this that we are facing in our neighborhoods and also at home and abroad uh, in so many ways. Uh, all kinds of discrimination and dictatorship um, affects us in so many ways. So it's just very important to raise our voice for it. So big thanks to you. Uh, and now I think I am going to call somebody from India as well. Uh, Aurobindo Ganga is joining us from Kerala. And uh, I want to say that uh, he's a very popular poet again, like uh, uh, Ramakrishna has said. He's the editor of the very talked about journal Inside, the magazine that we all love and wait very eagerly for the new issue to come out and read very passionately. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hi, somebody wants to say something? Okay, sorry about that. Um, we are actually live, so I should I should just uh, uh, you know continue anyways, uh, not not be uh, distracted by ambience. So um, Aurobindo Ganga, sir, I'm forgetting the name of his poetry book, but it's out there on Amazon. If you look look for it, you'll find it. Uh, but uh, he's he's uh, sharing his poetry all the time on Facebook, on very many other platforms of social media, uh, and uh, he's very much loved. And he is uh, also editing three anthologies. One is on uh, the mother-daughter relationship eternal mother or something like that it is called the uh, other is just best contemporary poets of uh, you know 2021 or something like that or the past 10 years maybe he will just recommend that and uh, what more to say i can go on and on but instead of that let me just call upon him he's also a gold medalist let me not forget that everybody doesn't get a gold medal in life right my mother once got it and she doesn't let me forget it. so <laughs> mom welcome to you and uh, waiting to hear from you. First of all, is it audible? Yes. Yeah, OK. Yes. Uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening to all the beautiful souls around the world. And uh, I would like to, first of all, extend my uh, gratitude to Ms. Pankuri Sinha for inviting me for the session. And I would like to uh, extend my wishes to all the dignitaries present uh, in the online session and all the beautiful souls who are listening to us. So, so beautiful to be here. And I'm so happy to be here. And uh, this particular event is very close to me because I'm trying to uh, give my thoughts on all the four uh, nations which she has uh, given to me. Palestine, Afghanistan, Myanmar, and Colombia. So I try to add uh, 
my thoughts and uh, i wanted to write a poetry of a definite of a definite in terms of uh, racial discrimination and the violence and things and i thought like it will become something of a monotone so i thought of adding a little of each country's thought process as such so here we go so it is it is it is going to be more of a prose kind of thing rather than though i don't do more of prose is more about poetry but uh yes this is going to be something different which i have tried because of this particular session so i hope you will like it so here we go you shall never see our voices living in penury for long we live with a hope for a better song to sing bourgeois sacrifice their today for a better tomorrow they live for their children to give them the thought to fly you sliced our wings how dare you deter our dreams you live for our children dare not see our wrath our adrenaline still simmers to your treachery we are prepared for the battle against the traitors for our nations to breathe without fear we are the gateway for south america being kind never underrated the fortitude within us with a vibrant culture to impede any of your distasteful deeds we shall never seal our voices we are the promised land the holy land to thwart your deceit the dead sea is never dead a life it fall the dead sea is you never dead a life it has for all the species within we promise for the holy land to constrain the traitors behind we shall never seal our voices we are the graveyard of empires many come many left many try their imprints to be amaranthine never did they know that the wind shall pass leaving tra no traces behind you can come you can come you can come we stand need your forte you shall never seal our voices we are the land of golden pagodas the stupas our veins are running into many capillaries of ethnic creeks to flow into the hearts of many temples many divers being synergized to resist the copes from yesterday to tomorrow you shall never seal our voices we live for a better tomorrow sacrificing our today for our children and nation our voices shall raise every time you shall obstruct us you shall never see our voice we shall never see our voice thank you wonderful absolutely gorgeous poem there uh, with so many imageries and so many nations yeah and their problems and and a vision for a solution uh, i love the way you talk about a promised land and i love the way you said we will never uh, seal our voices and we'll never let you chop our wings and uh, yes there are very many people looking for their children and they have dreams too and may the dreams come true i mean so many imageries there so many things there sir but you're also the guest of honor so you have to also say something about the poems read here so we are eager to um, hear that as well you know just uh, very briefly but do say something uh thank you pankri uh, so far uh, i have uh, uh, listened to all the wonderful poets around the globe and uh, what i could get maybe some of them maybe one or two i couldn't hear it because there was a technical issue where i couldn't grasp or maybe the sound the voice was not audible but uh, the poets have been uh, they have been very very uh, vociferous in what they wanted to show some were subtle some were vociferous some were vibrant but the whole thought process was more about what they wanted to convey and they had the belligerent within them they have 
the thought process absolutely very clear in what they wanted to deliver something which is coming very close to very close to their heart and coming from their heart from within as i say uh, we have the journal inside it is something coming within so it is coming within from us to the whole society the whole globe as such so so all the all the beautiful poems were mystified i was i was i was so 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 uh, uh, taken aback the kind of poetry the different style of poetry but everything conveyed the same thing what they wanted to say they wanted to have a voice and they conveyed their voice in a very subtle vibrant as i said vibrant and in their their own style and what it meant is we are all together for a cause and we want to raise our voices for the society as such where things are not happening according to how we thought about so our thought should go and i always feel being very spiritual i feel our vibes are more important when it it is not like i'm spiritual and another person isn't so it won't go so each each soul has got that vibe and when all those vibes are going to be together they synergize they are going to make a a, a revolution as such a silent re revolution for the society for the nation and for the globe and i suppose such session should be there and such vibes shall spread and that vibes will be for peace and humanity so i vouch for peace and humanity and such session should continue forever and i hope we will be able to get much more uh, much more voices many voices rather many voices not not, not alone uh within like 10 20 or 30 i i would i would go for more voices so that it spreads it spreads to the global arena and uh, we have a serious serious thought process going into in going on to in uh, wherein we create a good platform wherein certain problems though we might not be able to solve the problem as such but we will definitely give our thought process and that thought process can then go to an extent where any any problem can be uh, found a solution to so i hope so so thank you so much for inviting me and i'm i'm absolutely thrilled to hear all the beautiful obios which i have uh, listened to and it was so amazing to be part of it thank you so much truly humbled truly honored and we are delighted thank you for those words of encouragement and inspiration and uh compliment uh yes we are here together for a cause and you know we are fighting for it and thank you so much uh, that felt very very nice yes uh, and thank we you. are going to grow deeper and uh, we ask our viewers as well our friends watching us to join us uh you know in 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 spirit and 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 you there's so many ways you know we will continue to do this like um sir said or vindu ganga ji is saying that we will continue to do this there should be such uh, efforts you know so uh, thank you thank you again and thank you for all that uh, i mean thank you for your lovely words yeah and uh, now i think we have uh, somebody just joined stalina can you hear me hi uh, yes yes i can hear uh, one um. great stalina to you my dear uh, so hold on Hold on. We will come to you, my dear. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, she was having some technical and uh, joined late. Uh, never mind. Warm well, welcome to you. Be with us. She was in an official meeting and lots of confusion. Never mind. Warm well, welcome to you. So that is what I wanted to point out that I am seeing my name, uh, you know, uh, being displayed for you. Never mind. That's a technical glitch. No worries. So. Uh, probably because you did not register i had sent you the registration link never mind no worries uh, we will uh, get to you and we will hear your lovely poem so uh, we have two pankuris in has uh, written here but that is just me and that's talina uh, for everybody a uh, warm welcome to you again and be with us no, no worries no worries so um, okay now i'm going to call upon i think isaac cohen has stepped out Do you have to go somewhere, Isaac? Do you want to read your poem now? Our great friend from Israel, uh, who has uh, uh, joined us, 
uh, he's walking outside. Is it because of signal? Is it because you want to show us the beautiful sky of Israel? Or is it because it's your jogging time? Or is it because you have to get to some place really urgently? Uh, please tell me. Isaac is a very gifted poet, a very dedicated translator, and uh, an amazing friend. So warm welcome again, and over to you. Can you hear me, and can you start speaking? Wow, the amazing skies of Israel just disappeared. Yes. Yes. Uh, I must to uh, to take my uh, my daughter. Uh, Sorry. To some place. Yes. I the coin. The prophecy. Oh, the leader that had Sufi on the strip model. Oh, the wealthy that don't hear the echo of the stomachs of the poor. Oh, the oligarch that gluten and drink. On the day of judgment became a barracuda that make a all in all your stomachs and they can eat only throw. God, collect all the poor men and they eat well meat beside the throne. The poor men will change to active intelligence and be served in the holy sky. Thank you, Isaac Cohen, Israel, and uh, thank you, Panturi, and uh, all my friends. And uh, I must uh, to go immediately to the other place and uh, uh, goodbye. I, uh, I listen. Okay, listen. so yes. before you go, you. can you please uh, show us once again the lovely blue skies of Israel and the green trees and the tall buildings. Ah, ah and yes. The <laughs> yes. And the sunshine uh, streaming through. <laughs> yes. Hello to you. Wow. So nice. Wow. I really love this. Thank you. And for your poem, that was just amazing, my friend. Oh, the leader that came on the modern, the wealthy, the to hear the echo of the stomachs yes. of the <laughs> That was an amazing yes, thank poem. I'm going to translate it very soon for you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I just translated that macaron poem, um, which Anton. And uh, he's uh, our friend from Gambia is translating it. He's not here, but uh, I just kind of remember similar any kind of uh, dictatorship and addressing the leader uh, directly. So he has chosen the French president. I mean, I just kind of remember that. So I'm so, so thank you so much again, Isaac, and be with us, hear us out. And I think after that, uh, let's come back to India and let's go to our friend in Vizak. Prasanna Kumar is again a very gifted, talented poet, a great friend and a judge of several contests here and uh, very popular in the world of uh, uh, open mic live poetry reading in Latin America. Uh, multiple countries, he has been countries he has been performing in. I'm sorry, I'm joking on my wife. So, warm welcome to you, uh, Prasanna Ji, and over to you. And, uh, uh, you know, we can just see your cap uh, instead of seeing your face. So, so uh, yeah, so keep, your, so keep your head high and uh, read your poem out loud. 
Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me here, ma'am. And thank you for such a wonderful, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of introduction. And and uh, thank you all. I mean, wonderful souls out here. And many, many of them are known to me. And it's a, such a uh, pleasure to be here always, to be with you and reciting a poem, saying uh, some words and all. And this poem of mine is say something about, you know, the kind of, you know, the theme that's suitable to the theme. So here it goes. The eerie voice over baiting the places across far and wide. The soundtrack of footsteps echoing in the streets. There is a looming fear of security in so-called civilized world. Cacophonous protest and rock slides witnessed by azure skies. Crimson tides of disunity, gorging the discretion of humanity. There is an open battle of dominance, assault on the races and cash. Raping the chastity, snatching the rights of defenseless. Listening to the harrowing of peace, no one ready to appease their brutal intentions. Nothing ever remains forever is known is a known fact. Everyone knows of this knowledge of life. Then why the gullible is after pleasing the hunger of authority when there is a superior sovereignty ready to seek answers of your days when you get the read. So that's the end of the poem, man. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. A very Thank vocal you. support of uh, anybody who is robbed of or deprived of the rights that today in this world uh, we are all talking about, right? That there should be equality. So thank you so much. Beautiful poetic expression. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank and you. It's a pleasure now to uh, actually travel from Vizag to your neighborhood itself and ask my friend Manju Satish uh, to read her poem. Again, a very gifted poet, poetess. And uh, first of all, I'm so glad she's here. She was a little unwell and she's back now. And actually I should have uh, uh, called upon you earlier, Manju. I am sorry about that, but never mind. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, thank you so much. And please now over to you. Thank you so much, Pankuri, for a wonderful chance. Um, I know today's theme, uh, theme is about discrimination. And in my poem, I'm going to uh, throw, throw the light on a different kind of discrimination that is less talked about usually. And the poem is titled Discrimination. And this is how it goes. A man hit a woman. It was called sexism, for he was discriminating against gender. A white hit a black. It was for, called racism, for he was discriminating against race. A Hindu and a Muslim crossed swords against each other. It was called communalism, for they were discriminating against religion. A so-called upper caste person hit a so-called lower caste person. It was called casteism, for he was discriminating, discriminating against caste. A man hit his own child. And guess what was called parenting? It was called taming. It was called disciplining. For he was just striving to raise his child right. Seriously, is it? If you think by hitting your child, you are taming him, remember you are only discriminating against his size and satisfying your inflated ego, which is what needs to be tamed. If you argued it's okay to hit your child because he was wrong, dear Mr. Wright, you are no saint or innocent. You are here discriminating against age and ignorance. So perhaps it's you and not your child who needs to be disciplined. If you opine that he is your child and that gives you the right to hit him, pardon me, I wouldn't call you a parent. To me, you are just arrogant. For you look at your child as your property that can be ha handled according to your whims and fancies. 
Maybe I need to remind you that you are as well ignorant because parenting warrants duties and not rights. So you aren't really right about your right to hit him. The next time you feel like hitting your child, don't call it taming, disciplining, or parenting. It's just euphemism for discriminating. Maybe you need a lesson or two on anger management. So for heaven's sake, stop hitting your child. It's equality that needs to be taught to them and not discrimination. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very powerful poem and a very important one, right? A very relevant one and something that really needs to be said out loud. So yes, uh, you know, and lots of things uh, begin at home, they say, uh, wonderful, you know, we need to change our ways. I mean, I think this is a, this is a newer idea of, you know, uh, being kind to the child, not hitting and all that, because I think in all the thought that, you know, uh, <laughs> I am tempted to speak in Hindi about this because, you know, uh, this was in the tradition that, you know, if the child is misbehaving, you can just, you know, give, give them a one big, uh, uh, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So it's a very convincing poem and thank you. It is love that is the best way of disciplining. If you get with love, you also get it back, right? And similar, you know, even with discipline. Thank you. That's an amazing poem. And uh, if you just, uh, you, know, uh, you know, expand its meanings and, you know, take it into a wider context, it says so much, right? Uh, you know, don't hit a child and don't hit protesters. I mean, uh, you know, for regimes and for the police, it's, it's a huge problem, right? So it's against violence. Thank you so much for that, Manju. And now I think I'm going to call upon Molly, ma'am. And uh, uh, she's uh, uh, here. Uh, it's such a honor and pleasure to have you, ma'am. A wonderful gifted poetess, again, joining from Kerala, uh, quite an internationally reputed one. She's been to Kenya to read the poetry, has many anthologies, awarded as well. Warm well, welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ree. I hope uh, my voice is carrying enough to reach you all. Yes, and it's clear. It's clear. Thank you, dear poetic fraternity. I mean, in the generic sense, no gender division. It is great, great being with you. Disseminating thoughts on what is needed for the day. After all, what are we supposed to other than this? We people, poets who become the voice of the voiceless. Friends, I am a professor poet. In universities, we teach about colonialism, post-colonialism, and these days it is neo-colonialism. While on one side, technology is progressing like anything, world growing into a global village. Here we find another nasty neo-colonial Walking up of the head. What is that? The kind of domination. People made exiles in their own land. People denied of freedom, even freedom of expression. This was a thought that was uh, aching me throughout. I'm not expanding much on it, but going into my poem. Mostly my poems turn out to be question marks to make people think to prick the conscience. In fact, when I wrote this, I was so much disturbed by that incident, which all of you might remember how George Floyd was undergoing, you know? I can't breathe. What a situation predicament for a human being to be stifled by domination. In different forms of it, we find it everywhere. So the poem epitomizes, epitomizes the different ramifications of domination. Here I go into the poem. I can't breathe. The strangling footholds of arrogant domination 
still hold sway. I can't breathe. The brass and borders of your boots crush my throat. I can't breathe. My dizzy head, bulging eyes still glare at you, they receive the meaningless pomp that you are, deeming to be on top of the world. Has not the epidemic taught you when a micro nanovirus can make man vulnerable? How futile wars are, how futile warring minds. You who judge things at skin deep difference beneath the micro layer of our skin, colored with earthy counters, lie the flesh and blood that go through all essential humans. The color of our blood is red, the tinge of our flesh the same. Our needs the same to subsist, the same air and water. Sad how times have failed to teach you the oneness of mankind, though mankind always revolted against your hefty ways. Your ways to silence and stifle has brought wrath on you and your tribe. I can't breathe. My stifled breath becomes the air. Millions breathe. For sure, they would rise up to crush down your scaffolds of blotted, empty glory. Let fresh air waft in free for all to breathe, exist. I can't breathe. It stings this dusty, musty air. Thank you, dears, for the patient listening. Thank you. Very powerful, touching and moving poem. We all know how it became a catchphrase. You know, I can't breathe. But thank you for making such a powerful poem out of that and uh, bringing once again that scene alive and so many other problems that we face in everyday life, right? Little things of discrimination. Thank you so much, ma'am. And Warm welcome uh, to my friend uh, Tizina. Uh, she's joining us from Italy. And uh, I think that she also did not register. So now we have three Pankuri Sinhas. You are also showing with my name. Hi. Uh, so, you know, it's because you didn't register and I shared my personalized link. So uh, there are three. Uh, people with my name right now, but uh, don't get confused. Anybody, it's just you know we're just sharing the same link. Yeah. So warm welcome to you again, and I think now I'm going to call upon Xanthi, ma'am, from Greece, and then um, uh, I'm just uh, you know saying this, and then uh, or maybe just you know let's just do it one by one. So. Hi, over to you, Zenthi Ma'am. Uh, everybody knows her, a wonderful poetess, a passionate translator who also likes to read his, tra her tr I'm sorry, her translations. And, uh, but right now she's not going to read a translation, right? You're going to read a poem of your own, right? I, can, um, I would love to do both because I have one of my uh, poetry, which I wrote when um, the bombs over Yugoslavia started to fall, when they, the night the bombed Belgrade. And I have another one uh, which I recently translated for um, uh, in, in, into English from uh, a friend, which is a recent poem. Uh, they're both short. Mine is teeny tiny. So I will read first mine. Uh, it was written first in German, so English. The ceasefires. Wait, wait. If it was written in German, why don't you read the German version? Okay. Waffen ruhen. In den Waffen ruhen, die Zeit nutzen, um Blumen und Tränen an die Stelle zu legen, wo sich das Blut deines Bruders im Sonnenlicht bräunt, um die Wunde, die ewige Wunde des Kriegs zu schließen. 
And now in English, ceasefires. In the ceasefires, use the time to take flowers and tears to the point where the blood of your brothers is drowning the earth to heal the eternal wounds of war. That's that one. And the second one is called Out of Time. It is a little bit of a shocking, uh, it's a strong poem. It's a strong poem. And this is why I picked it, especially for today. Out of Time. Children are born next to us in ruins of bumped out maternity wards. They grow up sucking blood from the chests of their dead mothers. They play with bloody bullets soaked from the bodies of their slain fathers. They learn their first letters by reading daily obituaries, hoping not to find there their missing brother. Next to us, children are drowning in the sea of fake hope, in an unholy liquid graveyard of desperate souls. Fortunately, it's not us. And so, undisturbed, we turn our backs away, looking carefree to the other side and continue dreaming of Western bliss. Thank you. Amazing, amazing, both poems. Thank you so much. Yes, the first one is very powerful as well. And thank you, special thanks for reading in German. Um, you know, I heard German after a long, long time, uh, a poetry in German, so thank you for that. And yes, the blood of our brothers are drowning this earth and somebody needs to save it. Uh, we can just do a little bit, you know, to make that happen, right? So thank you. And yes, children are being born. I'm in Syria. Just look at Syria and look at Yemen and so many other places, right? So we are just talking about four nations. And actually, every country needs, uh, you know, um, such rebellious, uh, distant voices to talk about the discrimination faced in everyday life. So thank you so much, Xanthima. Such an honor and pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. And I think now I am going to call upon our guest of honor from the United States of America, Anita Nahelma. Uh, I, I think I kept her waiting for a long, long time. I hope that she's here. And uh, she, she just moved, you know, she said she's just changing houses. And I promised her that I would come to her in an hour, but I think I'm over that. And I think that she has actually uh, disconnected. Oh God, so we will, uh, you know, wait for her to come back and let us hope that that happens. And why do I not call upon um, our guest of honor from Colombia, uh, George, is he here? I think he's here, right? Um, yes, 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 yeah. I'm here. Yes, yeah. hi, George. Can you, hear me? Yes. can you hear me? I can, and I just want to say that you're a very gifted uh, poet and a writer. <laughs> as well and you published in very many countries including my own in india uh, you also actually published a brand new novel in uh, in a you know in a series right in a very prestigious publication in india uh, so you know lots to say about you but i think i'm just uh, going to say that much for now and over to you okay um this poem <clears throat> pardon me this poem was not written for her, uh, but today it's dedicated to her. It's dedicated to uh, Alison Melendez, a 17-year-old woman, uh, the, the 13th of May in the city of Popayan in Colombia. Uh, during, the, during the protests, um, she started, she wasn't even part of the protest, she just simply started filming what the ESMAD, which are the, the riot police, were doing to the protesters. She got out her cellular phone and she was filming and she was immediately taken away 
by four members of the Ismad. They took her to a supposed security checkpoint where apparently they sexually abused her. And she, after that, they let her go and she went home. And uh, what they didn't know is that she was the daughter of a policeman. And, uh, and so unfortunately, um, she killed herself the next day. So this poem is for Alison Melendez, uh, one of the many people who have suffered at the hands of the security forces in Colombia. I'll read it first in Spanish and then I'll read it in English. Mujer en llamas. Cuando las estrellas se ven mover, se convierten en líneas, barras, varillas. Alguien se mueve entre ellas. Una mujer en pedazos de calor, de sudor. Como el bareque incrustado en nuestros muros, como la melaza que corre por nuestras venas. La figura se desliza al piso lentamente. Algo se le vino a la cabeza y está rota, como si se hubiera chocado contra un espejo. Caen las estrellas y se clavan en la tierra. Encerrada en un cañaduzal, las miradas desde arriba tienen la culpa. Solo lo vertical puede aspirar a levantarse, como si fuera un brote de flechas que crecen, un plumaje verde, como barras dulces, inquebrantables. Cada cortada vierte sus adentros en el calor. Las varillas moradas del cuerpo colapsan bajo el sonido de los bichos rebotando contra todo lo quieto. Una polilla busca por dónde salir tras una membrana siempre, siempre escaparse parece fácil, pero no lo es. Los recuerdos vuelven en cascadas. Guadua y almendro Baldosa verde y café claro. El hilo se recoge para soltarlo. Para arriba y para abajo. Un árbol y un foso. Sembrar es la única manera de desenredar. ¿Alguna vez has visto un ser en llamas? Su estela de fuego que curva como un recuerdo y crepita como catapis al extenderse por la oscuridad. ¿Qué capricho impulsa semejante cuerpo? a consumirse, cómo deshacerse de todo lo que ha sido. And now in English. Woman in flames. When the stars appear to move, they become lines, they become bars, they become rods. Someone moves between them, a woman in pieces, pieces of heat, pieces of sweat, like the need and mud encrusted in our walls, like the molasses that runs through our veins, she slips to the ground slowly. Something has come to mind and she is broken, as if she had crashed into a mirror. Stars fall and stick in the ground, enclosed, <clears throat> pardon me, enclosed in a cane break that gazes, those that gaze from above are at fault. Only the vertical can aspire to lift itself as if it were sprouting arrows that grow, a green plumage like bars, sweet and unbreakable. Each cut spills its innards in the heat. The body's purple rods collapse under the sound of bugs as they ricochet off every unmoving thing. A moth searches for a way out through a membrane, inevitably. Escape. Seems simple, but it is not. Memories cascade down on her, cane and almond, green tile and weak coffee. Thread gathers in to be let out, upward and downward, a tree and a tomb. Planting is the only way to untangle. Have you ever seen someone in flames? Her wake of fire that curves like a memory and rattles like finger bones as it extends into darkness. What whim 
compelled such a body to conflagration? How, how to be rid of everything that has been? Thank you. Thank you for that very touching, very moving, very powerful poem. And uh, thank you for telling us the background for it. And uh, I don't know what to say. I think I just, I mean, that that line is just so piercing. Have you seen anyone ever in flames? Uh, actually, it's very, very painful. People, uh, even when they're protesting sometimes, this, even in India, and very recently this happened somewhere in the former USSR, and that was for a language. I'm forgetting the name of that poet who actually uh, burnt himself to death. My point is just that it's as it is very painful that they, the event that you narrated is really heartbreaking and uh, people have talked of such things being done to protesters in India. At least uh, I know of a few women uh, who were uh, just protesting and filming the citizenship law and they were picked up just because they were at the very end and they were alone. Uh, and people and we have signed petitions for them. So this is happening here. I mean, it's not so bad as there. And yes, I don't know about the sexual abuse, but you know what? Once you have been detailed, uh, this thing about abuse or this thing about using the, the prison label, even as a stigma, it becomes a social and even a political politics as well. If this is something to add to the uh, sexual abuse that was done by policemen, but I mean, it's, it's horrible, it's very painful. Uh, Thank you so much, George. But you're also the guest of honor. So I'm going to ask you to say something about uh, just a little bit more, if you wish, about Colombia and uh, you know, the goal of the protesters, which we discussed informally earlier, and uh, also about our effort here uh, to get some justice in some way and to raise awareness that poetry can be a powerful medium of you know, speaking up and that we should, shouldn't ever be Yes, Are okay. You Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, um Yeah, the the you know, part of the whole um part of the ability of a government to do this to a people or to a population has to do with their ability to cover it up a little bit. And um, especially internationally. And uh to the point where you know, you can, if you turn on CNN, you can even see the president of Colombia talking very optimistically about his legacy, you know, in, in these little short things that, these, that they record. And um, it's a legacy of brutality and, and bloodshed, actually. And um, so I, you can't, I don't think you can under, you know, you can, I don't think you can rather overestimate the importance of events where people speak out and give testimony about things that that they have suffered at the hands of the powerful who would like to shut them up and who would like to have those things forgotten or or kept in darkness uh, i i think that it's extremely important to speak out and that's why i'm i'm part I'm part of this uh, reading. That's why I'm so happy to be part of this uh, event. And I, I think that all of the voices we've heard today, you know, um, there's there's an attempt to look toward justice and mercy. And and if we can, if we can get even millimeters closer, it's worth the effort. So. Yes, for me, um, I'm I'm very happy to 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 be part of this and to be witnessing all, listening to all the other readers and and what they bring, and their perspectives and 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 what they're trying to resist, what they're speaking out about. I, I it's it's very important to me, and and we are in a critical situation in Colombia. You know, uh, at the moment, uh, I'll be back in Colombia next week. At the moment, I'm in the United States. And I can tell you, no one here knows what's happening in Colombia. They have no idea. 
they hand, and when I go back, it's hard for, uh, I mean, I'm going back next week, that it's hard for, for my fellow Colombians to believe that, that there's, how can you not know? How could you not know that such a thing was going on? But the, but the, the, the media is a very powerful tool and so, no, I congratulate you and all of the organizers and everybody who's participating in this event, because um, it's just another opportunity to try to bring light to things that are, that are happening around the world. Thanks so much. Thank you so much to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, and your president was attacked by getting close to the Venezuelan border. Uh, was that, uh, was it, uh, uh, you know, from inside Colombia or was it uh, Venezuela or, uh, you know, do you think that U.S. could play a bigger role? I'm sorry, I just, I just uh, wanted to ask you because you dropped it. Yeah, Un unfortunately, um, it's really hard um to get uh to get information about these sorts of events at the moment what we're hearing for the most part is that it was actually a staged event you know oh. uh, to, in, in order to build sympathy for the government uh you know the, the, he's doing a, a series of very strange things uh, i think i have hope out of desperation. I hope he's at the end of his rope, but, but you know, we can't count on these things. We have to keep pressuring. Absolutely. And we all hope that things improve uh, for you out there in Colombia and everybody out there so bravely protesting and facing so much brutality. I really hope that you get just as soon as, as for everybody else here in India, in all the other places that we are talking about today, and Nigeria, and everywhere out there, and wherever you are from. So thank you so much, George. Thank you for that. And I think now I'm going to go to uh, Bulgaria and uh, call upon Sir Tom. Uh, he's joining us from uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, he's actually from England, but uh, now who lives in Sofia, Bulgaria, he is a Professor of Creative Writing. He's, he's a wonderful poet. I have had the good fortune of translating him a little bit, and we are familiar with those poems and uh, translations as well. Um, and, and there's so much to say about him. You know, he's a passionate translator himself. He learned Bulgarian, he even writes poetry in Bulgarian. So uh, I have also translated him from Bulgarian. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's also been a journalist. He, uh, he has several uh, anthologies and um, also did travel writing on Albania. So warm well, welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Pankuri. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> hello to everyone I, I know already and hello to everyone who's new. It's really great to hear so many poems and, um, and, and new voices to me or, or, or whatever. And when I heard about this um, uh, reading, I realized I had a kind of, I, I had this kind of ongoing project and it's called What Hope Now Requires um, and it's kind of poems that come out of conversations uh, with people that I know so I'm just going to read two little parts from it. One is uh, from a conversation uh, with someone I know here in Bulgaria who grew up during the totalitarian communist period um, and the second one is based a little bit more on um, I have friends in Myanmar uh, so it's based a little bit on conversations with them, uh, but also I have friends who work with uh, refugees who are trying to cross the Mediterranean. So there's a little bit of a uh, crossover there. Anyway, so this is from What Hope Now Requires. Um, and the first part is called um, A Kitchen in the Time of Dictatorship. Fragile piece of a small oil lamp draws muzzy flitting insects. A green blaze of uniform stands by orders given. The long night's agitation flickers across the kitchen table. Reports of to be hastily rewritten. A rumble of jets is merely an occurrence. What we have kept in this room must go further than this room, but with 
no margin forever. Consequences are explicit, threatened by a single raised hand. Our hands hold to each other around this small lamp. And then the, the other part that I want to read is called um, Thunder on the Horizon. Desert storms whip across jeans, orange clouds flare behind palms. In administrative buildings, calm still faces coolly decide fates of those gathering of remote border posts, humanity lost in all senses. An urge for expulsions from occupied territory drives through government policy. As options go, it's easy, blame someone else. Only here, where lives are put on hold or worse, the land is cut with a long wound and the burning heat of the sun may yet drown in clouds that deepen to a storm. How we might fall in ominous soundings, roaring like thunder's threat as it stalks the horizon. Then violence breaks open the sky, striated lights streak from military compounds. We can see them from here, but we'll only do so in the morning on the morning news and then look away or complain of momentary troubling and assume those calm still faces coolly deciding fates. On a beach not so far from here boats haul up on shingle. What difference might there be in the world if we went down to the waves and opened our arms and said welcome? Thank you. Thank you to you, sir, for two very powerful poems. Amazing, fragile piece and thunderstorm on the horizon. Thank you so much. I'm not going to say too much about the poem, except that it both were amazing. Thank you so much and always a pleasure to have you. Thank you, sir. And now I think I'm going to call upon Anne Timmer. She's joining us from Italy and she's also a guest of honor this evening. Warm welcome to you. We all are familiar with her poems, with her wonderful Rucksack project, which is making waves all over the internet and in real life. The uh, poems were displayed in this beautiful little museum of poetry in Italy. What more uh, beauty can come to poetry and its uh, celebration? Uh, so, uh, you know, so uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing, you know, uh, to have that. And uh, Sabrina Lam is also involved with them. She's not here today, but I fondly remember her. Uh, Andrew Mann is also the editor of several magazines and also associated with the Tirandas in Bangladesh. She's a member of the Pan Germany Association. Warm welcome to you, and your poems are always amazing. So, warm welcome to you, ma'am. And maybe you want to say something about the crisis that we, we are talking about just very briefly because you work very closely also with the refugees, right? You organized a big reading on the World Refugee Day. So over to you. Thank you very much, Pankuri. Thank you for organizing this very important meeting. And thank you to everybody showing uh, his voice, hearing, making his voice loud about this, all these conflicts in the world. I just want to remind that the media, as George uh, from Colombia said, have a very important role in the conflicts because they can decide if a war stops or not. And the other very important thing is war is made with weapons and arms. And these are the biggest business in the world to sell weapons. So all of our societies have a big economical interest in producing arms. And as long as we don't do anything against this, war will continue and uh, the arms will be used. Even the inventions are all made from the militaries. The computer was invented for military reason. We use it now civil, in a civil way, but the military has a big, big power. And I think we have to start at that point. I want to read you a poem about the Palestine uh, Palestine, the attack the Israelis made recently during the night in a very, very terrible way, killing whole families in the sleep. Inimaginable. What is the sense of this? I cannot understand it. All should cry, beware, beware. 
cyclopic walls girdle the land way down into the sunless sea. The last war is not over yet, and once again they stare on the dried blood and piles of debris. They stare across a landscape of concrete skeletons. Children won't grow old in this place. They cling to their parents, trying to sleep, still breathing restlessly underneath the bed for shelter until the next missile falls and they all will be gone. Those who remain will repair the windows, the roof and the hope. They will lay their hands on growing scars, speaking to the dead, a holy place, they say, where hatred thrives and feeds a twisted mind with no traces of regret. And someone makes a profit of this dirty business once again. Thank you. What a wonderful poem. And someone makes a profit out of this dirty business again. Right? And this is what they are saying about Burma as well, that the arms supply needs to end. Somebody needs to end that. Thank you, ma'am, for that amazing work. Yes, senseless war and meaningless attack and meaningless encouragement uh, is really a problem. Thank you for that very, very powerful poem. Uh, and now I think uh, our friend from uh, Romania, actually from Palestine, uh, is, is, is uh, you know, wanting to say something as well. So uh, I'm going to uh, call upon, uh, he's a very esteemed uh, guest here and everywhere we are all familiar with Munir Mirziad. Uh, he's the man behind the foundation that organizes so many wonderful events, but a very celebrated, decorated poet himself. Uh, he has spent over a hundred anthologies, say many, many translations as well as his poetry and uh, you know, he's very active uh, with uh, other projects of building peace and building bridges between religions, establishing uh, dialogues between different religions. And he deals with very many conflicts and he knows that, you know, you have to, uh, you know, appreciate and understand very many point of views as well. So he, here is a man who's dealing with a lot. Bob, welcome to you, sir. Such a pleasure and honor to have you here. Over to you. Uh, you want to say something and you want to please read your poem. Can you hear me? Sorry, I'm reading the name. Who are you calling on? Sorry, who are you calling on, Pankhuri? Muni. Are you talking to me? Yes. Because I can't hear you. The voice is went out, your voice. Okay. Oh, okay. But yes, yes. You so please go ahead. Now? Okay. Yes. So and your... You want to say uh, some? Yes, please no, read your but... poem, sir. Okay. I, I would like to thank you all. I'm so happy to be with you. My name is Munir Bizit. I am a Palestinian uh, living in Romania, and I'm, I thank you so much uh, that uh, for inviting me here. And I would like to read you a poem 
away from politics, from all world conflict. I want to read your love poem. It's a very sensual poem. It's mystical and sensuality. Away from all these conflicts. It is uh, because I believe that the only way we defeat uh, evil with love. So love is the strong weapon that we have to compact all these evilness. So I like, I will first see it in Arabic, then I'll read it to you in English. Or you want me to read it in English only? Which you no, prefer? No, please read Arabic, Arabic. Okay. Uh, the name of the poem in the name of love. باسم الحب باسم الحب الذي يحرر النفس أغني باسم الحب الذي يحرر النفس أغني ما أنا ما أنا إلا قصيدة شعرية ضائعة في الأفق الأعلى وإذا فتشت عنها فلن تجد غير الله مرشدا لا تحاول لا تحاول إيقاظ الكلمات حتى لا يتراكم الغبار حتى لا يتراكم الغبار فوق الشفاء دع نار العشق تشتعل في الروح بشدة لا بد من وجود سبب يجعل الحب متعطشا دوما للنار تلك المرأة تلك المرأة التي تختال بفستانها الأحمر وبأجنحتها الوردية شجرة كرز تقف على حافة الأبدية تنتظرني تغسل نهدها بالبرد تؤتي أكلها كلما دعاني الحب إليها ف... فأتمثل لها فأتمثل لها بشرا سويا تطعمني ثمارها وأنا أسقيها حليبا رقراقا من النار والنهر المتعطش للحليب يصرخ هل من مزيد؟ In English In the name of love that set the free that set the soul free I sing In the name of love that set the soul free I sing, I am not more than a lost poem, a note surrendered, held within the plush of highest point above the horizon. If you search for it, you will not find a guide, but God. Don't try to awaken the words in order to prevent dust accumulation on the lips. Let the fire of passion fiercely burn in the soul. There must be a reason why love is so thirsty for fire. That woman who walks proudly, the chest, the velvety sway of confidence steps, her red dress, rosy wings, a cherry tree in a full bloom. It stands on the edge of eternity, waiting for me, washing her breast with the hailstone, notable hands of light, yielding its fruit whenever love invited me to her bed. Thus I only appear myself to her as a man in full respect, careful to savour. She feeds me passionate fruit generously, making plentiful all that I yearn for. All the while my blood races fervent as I pour sparkling milk of fire. Her state has not been said, has not been met. The river yearns eagerly for more milk, rushing hot sparks that originate as before lava erupts. The river, she cries out, is there any more? Her drenched wings unfold drying in the breast of sunlight as she called out for me. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for that beautiful poem, sir. Thank you. Indeed, love is the solution to all. Uh, allow me, uh, excuse me, thank you so much, but please allow me to leave because I have a meeting uh, with my uh, staff for the foundation because every Sunday at seven o'clock at this time, but I make it 7.30. We have a meeting uh, for our uh, Zoom meeting. So I apologize and I thank you all and I wish you good luck and uh, see you again.
Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, and see you again, indeed. Wonderful. Now let's come back to India. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure and honor. Let's come back to India. And I am going to ask uh, Poonam Chawla Sood uh, to please read her poem. We are all familiar with her. Uh, she's a wonderful poetess, a bilingual poetess, a gifted one. And uh, she's published in very many journals and anthologies, home and abroad. Her own journals are also making some ripples here. So uh, warm welcome to you, Poonam Di, Poonam Ma'am. You need to unmute. You need to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pankri. And uh, greetings to all the lovely poets. I hope I'm audible. Yes. I'm audible. Yeah. Can you all hear me? So my poem today is uh, Audacity of Hope. During my novice years in job, I had to go through frequent provincial relocations. During my novice years in job, I had to go through frequent provincial relocations away from family and friends. I loved observing people, their surroundings, culture, traditions. So the local railway platform became my favorite hangout for late evenings. On one such small station, I noticed a young woman combing her hair, looking into the mirror, tucked along with a faded wet towel in the grill of a channel gate of a narrow passageway meant for the railway staff. Her bag, bedroll, tiffin, water bottle and glass were neatly placed against the wall. I visited the station often, saw her sleeping, sitting, singing with a stray dog curled at a little distance. A tea vendor narrated her plight. She belonged to Rohingya refugee family who virtually got her married to a Rohingya man in Malaysia. He demanded amount transferred online to his account for buying tickets to take his wife along. Since then, for seven months, she has been waiting on this platform where he promised to come. Her family moved, but she refused to go. No, she wasn't. She had no, she has no mental issues, the vendor assured. After 11 months, I got transferred again. From the same platform, I boarded the train. As the train moved, I saw the woman at the exit gate, anxiously looking at each passenger who alighted from the train. My train caught speed. I reclined on my seat, closed my eyes, contemplating, which is more distressing, complete darkness or beacon of hope. Thank you so much. Thank you. So here is a refugee crisis mixed with a gender war and uh, leading to such calamity. Thank you so much for that powerful poem. Uh, thank you so much. And now I think I have to call upon our guest of honor who's joining us from Barcelona, Spain, Juan Pablo Roa. He's a poet, a passionate poet, uh, an editor and publisher of a magazine, quite popular. And uh, his publishing uh, is actually bigger than that. He also has you know, uh, bigger publishing uh, enterprises out there and does many, many meetings and so on. And I think you also have a very popular bookstore, right? Bookstore. So, uh, yeah.
right? And, uh, you know, he's a translator as well. So, warm welcome to you. He's migrated from Colombia, uh, and now he lives in Barcelona, but he's going to talk about uh, Colombian politics. So, warm welcome to you, sir. Hello, Pankhuri. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here with you. I am Colombian. I was born at Bogota, but I live outside the country since 1993. So the poem I'm going to read is a metaphor of our second time of life that I think is made from paper and wood. Let me see from poetry and writing. Uh, this poem belongs to my book, There is Some Place Where No One. And in Spanish, it sounds like this. No llamo a los muertos por su nombre, pero uno a uno los voy poniendo en el árbol del difunto. Hacia adentro crece. El sol dora sus raíces y sus frutos son un limbo fértil de añejas palabras. Bajad del árbol, que la cena está servida, dice mi madre entre suspiros, limpiando, reparando y encalando muros de un espacio que ya es de nadie. Yo prefiero descender por ramas de papel y de vez en cuando subir hasta la raíz. Traigo viejas y trabajadas palabras en la noche para morder el duro fruto, el duro pan, del llanto. And uh, the English version translated by Joseph Wilson sounds like this. I don't call the dead by their names. Instead, I hang them one by one on the tree of the deceased. It grows inwards. Its roots gilded by the sun and its fruit is a fertile limbo of aged words. Come down from the tree, dinner is ready. My mother says between sighs, cleaning, repairing and whitewashing walls in a space that now belongs to no one. I prefer to clean down the branches of paper and everyone in a whole cream up to the roots. I bring old and well-worn words in the night to beat the bitter fruit, the stale bread of morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a very powerful poem and I also have had the honor of translating it in Hindi, right? I don't call the dead by names, yeah? Right, um, thank you. That's a very, very powerful poem. Now, uh, do you also want to say just a word about us and the Colombian situation or, um, you know? Yes, but I, I think that uh, even if the Colombian situation is uh, a word, a uh, terrible, think uh, I think that uh, in the world there are a lot of people who are worse than we so I don't uh, like to have a specific thing to our our country because it's a very conservative uh, country I mean the government is one of the more uh, conservative governments in South America uh, that's why a lot of people in uh, around the world they said that Colombian people speaks the best Spanish of the world, and when I hear this thing, this word, this speech, I I, I say that it's okay, but it's also a sign of a very conservative and uh, psycho rigid uh, way of thinking. So. I am agree what we are, people are doing in Colombia because there are 50 years of violence and 
the people don't have any space to to grow and to have democracy. So I think it's, it's, it's okay that people must to denounce and, and fight for their rights. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your support. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I mean, I, I am really honored and uh, uh, you very well depicted, you know, that you agree with what they are doing. The people should eat us, yes. So thank you again. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to call upon somebody from uh, Tamil Nadu, India. She's from Switzerland, living in uh, India. Uh, a wonderful poetess, Johanna Devadaru. Ma'am, uh, I don't think I called her, I, 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 I said her last name, I pronounced her last name right, but sorry, uh, we will rehearse it later. Johanna, ma'am, warm welcome to you. Uh, a wonderful poetess, winner of the Panorama Award, and uh, a, a wonderful translator as well. Warm welcome to you. Um, Thank you. I hope I'm audible this time. <laughs> yes, loud and clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, I greet everyone from my heart. I was not sure if I was able to come and attend this meeting because I had not been able to write uh, a poem on discrimination on this topic. And but Sister Pankuri encouraged me to somehow attend and choose some poem. So I choose a poem that I originally wrote in German and it is actually the cure for discrimination. That's why I choose this poem. I'll read it in English, and if you like, I will read in German also afterwards. Yeah, if you want, you can read in German. Okay. Of love bridges. As we travel the endless dusty road, many things cause us to start with inexplicable desire. Passion glows within the heart, a common goal we all do cherish, we all want peace, we play our part. Over hills and vales, over land and sea, where do we start, where do we go? Infinitely long seems the way, round about, up and down, back and forth. If we just built love bridges, the distance reduced would be short. The proud petrified castles are evidence of former culture. The tall rusted bell towers, memorials of living spiritual structure. Today, everyone is seemingly so safe in this world, alienated from nature. Deep are the valleys of endless battles. In dark forests full of thieves, aberrations, facing floods of lies, the size of the sea, in cheerful hustle and bustle, deceptions of the best material of love. Let us build strong bridges, lasting constructions. Resisting every storm, love bridges are strong. In high tides, they stand the challenging strain. They tower above fences and national borders, connecting incompatible blood beyond pain. A soul bond they are beyond language. Within your hearts, kindle love's flame. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful poem. <laughs> So if you like, I can read it in German, if it's not too late. <laughs> yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Von Liebesbrücken. So vieles treffen wir an auf dem langen Weg. Sorry, auf dem Weg dem langen. Im Herzen glüht die Leidenschaft von unerklärlichem Verlangen. Möchten wir doch alle im Frieden unser gemeinsames Ziel erlangen? Wo fangen wir an? 
Wo gehen wir hin? Über Berg und Tal, über Land und Meer? Unendlich lang scheint der Weg auf Umwegen, auf und ab, hin und her. Doch wenn wir Liebesbrücken bauen, verkürzt sich die Distanz so sehr. Die stolzen, versteinerten Schlösser sind Zeugen von einstiger Kultur. Die hohen, verrosteten Glockentürme erinnern an lebendige, geistige Struktur. Heute ist jeder scheinbar so sicher in seiner Welt, entfremdet von der Natur. Tiefe Täler von endlosen Kämpfen, Irrwege in dunklen Wäldern voller Diebe, Fluten von Lügen in Meeresausmaßen, Täuschung in heiterem Getriebe. O oh, lasst uns bauen starke Brücken aus bestem Material der Liebe. Liebesbrücken bestehen jeden Sturm, sie stehen stark auch in hoher Flut. Sie überragen Zäune und Landesgrenzen, verbindet unverträgliches Blut. Sprachen sind dort kein Problem. Entfacht in euren Herzen die Liebesglut. Thank you. This was my book. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful poem. And thank you for the German translation. Thank you for the beautiful reading of German, the sound of it. Thank you so much, man. We really enjoyed the German part as well. Thank you. It's always thank nice. you. <laughs> in different languages. So thank you, honored. Uh, and now I think I'm going to call upon our guest of honor who's joining us from uh, Kerala. It's uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we've been doing this for over two hours now and we will, uh, we will wrap it up shortly, but, but I see that everybody is all interested. So please uh, be with us, friends. And now I think I'm going to call upon our guest of honor from Kerala, Shijil and Shusar. He's a very uh, popular poet here, and he's also the uh, editor of this another very popular internationally acclaimed journal. I think Anna Maria Mam is also familiar with that journal. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's a French name, right? I think the English version would be literature review or something like that. It's a very nice journal. There's lots of beautiful poems in the May uh, issue. And again, in the June issue, lots of my poems. Uh, uh, his own books are out there, very popular among his students. He's the principal of a polytechnic uh, college in Kerala. So warm welcome to you, sir. Um, and apologies for keeping you waiting for so long. But it was a pleasure and honor to have you here. And uh, please, we would also like to uh, hear a little bit, just a little bit about, you know, our theme, our performance, our effort, uh, and your poems. Greetings to all poets assembled here for a particular cause. Uh, let me introduce that my magazine's name is Literature Redefining World. It's all, this magazine is also brought up with uh, eliminating the discrimination over the uh, anything. No discrimination should be there. That is the theme of that magazine. Uh, hearing all the, uh, listening to all the poets here, I am reminded of Rachel Corey, an American uh, peace activist was crushed to death by Israeli defense forces by a bulldozer in southern Gaza Strip, laid back in uh, 2003. She was only 23 years old at that time. She was resisting the demolition of uh, Palestinian houses by the Israeli army. So while uh, listening to these poems, I was reminded of uh, Rachel Corey. And at the age of 10, uh, she wrote a poem. In that poem, the first li four lines is like this. I am here for other children. I am here because I care. I am here because children everywhere are suffering. And because 40,000 people die each day from hunger. And her last line is like this. If we ignore hunger, 
that light will go out. If we all help and work together, it will grow and burn free with the potential of tomorrow. This poem she wrote at the age of 10, and at the age of 23, while resisting the uh, discrimination or, uh, uh, and atrocities at Parasim, she lost her life. See, uh, now we are talking about four countries. And uh, if you go, uh, go through the poems itself, the theme selected by each poems, one can see that there are common things in four countries, like uh, the, the discrimination is uh, common. Discrimination over things, what happening is common. But only the reason for discrimination or uh, who does the discrimination is different. That's the only difference. For example, uh, detention and unfair trials are going on in all these four countries. Freedom of movement is restricted in all these four countries. Torture and other ill treatment are happening. Unlawful killings, excessive use of force that is happening in all, all these four countries. And most important, Violence against women and children are happening in all these four countries. And that is the most pathetic part. Women and children are most affected. And rights of refugees and internally displaced people and migrants are denied, always denied. This is what is happening. In Israel, the reason may be different. They, they, they have they a have reason for displacement or uh, the conflict between the Palestinian occupied uh, uh, occupied Palestinian territories may be the reason. In Colombia, it may be the internal armed conflict, land restitution, security forces, paramilitaries, uh, guerrillas, etc. In Afghanistan, it's the armed co uh, conflict, Taliban and the government, like that. In Myanmar, coming to Myanmar, we will see that in, it is an internal armed conflict between the military and ethnic groups. So, but whatever be the case, the people are suffering. And if you uh, look at your actual reason why this is happening. This is a, uh, say from 2003, there are resistance from, there are protests from many peace activists, many poets all over the world, but nothing has changed. There is a prolonged situation of immune and inhuman activities taking place all over. This myth has rightly pointed out that dictatorship, discrimination, violation of privacy, and human rights are the culprits. I agree. But what is the solution? Is there is any solution? That is a question. I, I think this yes. is this is what we are fighting against, you know, that we have yeah. to find a solution against dictatorship. Yeah. So while uh, listening to the poems, what I felt was uh, that is a solution. And the solution is what I think. The style of leadership should change. That is what one way. That's the best way. The leadership now find all these problems as a way to escape from the real problems which is happening inside the country and reach into power. That is the main issue. So how will you arrive at this uh, solution? We literators, we writers, we poets, we artists have greater role in molding the leadership. See, a 10-year-old girl wrote a poem at the age of 10, and at the age of 23, she was resisting. So she had the inspiration at the small age itself for fighting against discrimination of all sorts. Yeah. So my belief is, literators have a greater role in molding the leadership. So it's time. At least we must, at this uh, period of COVID smash, we must realize that it is time to reform the borders and revalidate the oneness of human race. So that's a thought which came while listening to the uh, all the poems and the great poets here. And uh, uh, and I would say the poems uh, joined here has shown their solidarity with the last lines of Rachel Corey. That is, if we all help to help and work together, the light will grow and burn free with the potential of tomorrow. So that is what we have to do. And I have a small poetry 
for the yes. rulers for the leadership for the leaders right so this is a small point oh manhood that is earth and sky earth is where you live upon your dwelling place you have land ocean and mountains save every species of life and permanent around give living space for others be it human or not like the sun and stars become a light for others you will feel a soothing breeze when you make others happy that is heaven nothing more nothing less there is light there is darkness day and night morning and evening seasons days and years water and dry land green herb seed and fruit creeping creatures flying flows fish and whales beasts and cattle multiplying and filling water earth and sky and man and woman to rule over the globe and all keeping others happy safe and relaxed protecting the earth sky water and its inmates rejuvenating your body and soul this is what i think the leader should take care of all other interests should fade out and this must be their objective if such a thing happen and if we literators are able with poets and literators are able to make them change a little bit this discrimination will go the borders will wither away thank you thank you for taking part in this uh, meet wonderful meet uh, this is not the last uh, meet i think we should continue with this we should continue finding a solution for all this thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much for your wonderful words and for the lovely poem and thank you so much for talking about that activist rachel uh, i did not know about her uh, and thank you for uh, reading her poem thank you so much truly honored and i think now i'm going to call upon a friend who is joining us from italy uh, and who again you know is using uh, i think her name is just saying is my name she did not register but uh, you know we were just talking and she said she wanted to read an italian poem with a french translation and uh, i would rather ask her to read the french translation and maybe just tell her tell us a little bit about what the poem is um so are you here uh tiziana uh it would be wonderful to hear you so i hope that you can uh, you know read out something for us are you joining us from uh, from a facebook group and it was wonderful to meet you warm welcome to you can you hear me no okay so uh in the meantime uh why don't we uh, call upon stalina if she's here because uh, the uh, our zoom is showing me both so uh, stalina if you're still here otherwise john and i are uh, very eager to read and before that we have to listen to uh, our guests of honor we are very eager to listen to dominic williams and the so uh, he's a guest of honor he's Joining us from where is a very gifted poet, Stalina. Uh, it's okay, great, you are here. Uh, so um, this is uh, the first time we are meeting. So warm welcome to you. Uh, you're a gifted poet. You're also connected with the sciences. I'm not going to say too much about your introduction. And uh, yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, can you hear? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh huh. Uh, so. i will not uh, talk for long because it's already late uh, first of all i would like to say sorry for joining late because i was busy with the meeting anyhow so happy to hear all these uh, wonderful poems as we say poetry is the voice of humanity and uh, right now the when i heard all those poems the some lines from the famous poem where does it hurt of wasanshia uh, it came into my mind it goes like this i held an atlas in my lap ran my fingers across the whole world and whispered where does it hurt it answered everywhere 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 that is the poem which came into my mind and then okay i would like to go to my poem also because uh, as i said we don't have much time left so again the poem is the paradise state 
the paradise state a dog has no country only its territory where it peace but god has many countries and toilets all around the world the floors of which are stained with the spittle of injustice and hatred paradise state stands tall among all as the supreme abode of the mighty phallus the naked pride is worshiped everywhere the naked pride is worshiped everywhere which reincarnates in myriad forms while as secured locks of heaven and doors thrown open for pins the phallic state thrives on aphrodisiac packs and memory loss pills ticklish tentacles ensure a tongue tied obedience constant chants of praise and pins pollute the air the reckless hunt for a word search leaves some endangered species live their secret lives in the roaring cities where bubbled up floods of joy covers their faces choking in despair the skeletons of sparrows poisoned with golden lace letters of archaic bias are buried in the tracks of an underground station shaking in every shriek of pain the days and nights are alike filled with soaring horrors jane vampires gleefully roam around as the land is made free for them to invade while the premier priest a narcissist merchant writes more invitations everything is picture perfect as the structures of tomorrow's dreams should remain sharp and intact the mutation will be complete once the parasite state sucks up all voices even the fall even the fall of a drop of blood thank you Wonderful. The poem you read with other poetess, I'll ask you her name again later, it was amazing. I took an atlas in my, in my lap and ran my finger and it hurt everywhere. And your poem was very nice as well. God has many, many countries, right? May he do some wonders and magic, right? And may he make people happy. So, thank you so much, Stanley. Wonderful. Thank you again. Wonderful. And now I'm going to call upon our guest of honor, uh, Dr. Hasina Sultan. Thank you, sir, for being so patient. I hope that your signal works. You uh, need to turn your video on as well. And uh, please, uh, you know, we are waiting to hear you on uh, on the topic. I know that you're in Assam. Assam was in news with the Rohingya refugees, with uh, uh, so much that is going on with the citizenship law. Right, so it, I'm, I'm just very eager to hear you on, on this, uh, because Burma is, I mean, it's going through a, not just a revolution, I mean, it's not going through a revolution, it's going through a brutal uh, regime suppression. Uh, human rights violation is happening in Burma. We've been hearing about the Rohingya since a long time, but now it's full fledged in Burma itself. Um, so, you know, we are waiting to hear from you. Uh, on our effort on this and your lovely poems. Oh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, greetings to everyone. Uh, I would set out by offering a bouquet of thanks to Pankuriji for her noble initiative and relentless efforts to weave a tightly patriotic of poets without borders. Uh, she's definitely not only a great poet, but a great poetry activist as well. Uh, the theme she has picked up for today's poetry session 
speaks volumes for her deep concerns for humanity and human values that poets in particular and people at large need to inculcate. Well, even as we move jubilantly to the wonders of human achievements in the 21st century, we as poets indeed need to reflect that not everything is well with us. We as committed poets need to rise to this semi side of reality. I am highly honored and privileged to be part of this beautiful poetic endeavor, uh, to be amongst a galaxy of poets from across the globe. Mm. Poetry reading for Myanmar, Afghanistan, Palestine, and Colombia. Poetry reading against dictatorship, discrimination, violation of privacy, and human rights. The caption speaks for itself. Um, um, uh, should I uh, read a poem now first uh, or say something? In fact, I wanted to say I something about the team, but uh, I think I, I should read a poem first and then. Um, yeah, uh, it's up to you. Uh, I'm yeah. a bit confused as to um, uh, which poem I should read and um, should I read an uh, some poem first since I am from Assam <clears throat> or, or um, no? Okay, um, I'll read two poems. Okay? The first one is entitled um, The Rival Bad Poet. Um, it's a very short poem. Mm. And the Rival Bad Poet. Okay, uh, this poem is about a poet, a bad, and a flying bird. Um, okay. Uh, quietly as it sat brooding close to the barbed wire fence, a free bird came flying over his head from across the forbidden frontier. And he wondered if it knew anything about the laws of the alien land, the gruesome saga of close border rights, and the stony codes of the detention camps. The bird stirred him like a storm of sea, a, a storm in a sea of thoughts. And as he stormed deep, and as he stormed deep into the sea of his story, read history, uh, he saw in him the humanist revolutionary predatory, predatory bard, the poet, who killed and ate free birds, who killed and ate free birds, he professed love in his verse. Okay, this is my first poem. A uh, second poem, uh, was uh, written in uh, uh, Assamese um, and I've translated it into English as well. And uh, this um, love poem, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, um, but the title is Because I Love You. Okay, um, this was for, uh, originally written in Assamese. Uh, I've translated it into English. I'll read the translation only. Uh, because I love you, there still blooms a blood red hibiscus in my heart. Wakes of the aches, topping the hearts of young trees, snatch sleep of my cozy furniture. Smell of the uprooted drips down to, to, to my flower vases. On the podium of the freedom craving exotic fish in the aquarium, the gulf between the exploiter and the exploited grew a storm of protest. Because I love you, the, the naked children in the unclothed city frolic in my heart's pavement. They, like stars, shine in the reverie of my sky love. Their starry eyes twinkle through the thick clouds through the thick clouds. Free birds sing of the dreams of a million stars. Starlit eyes celebrate the festival of glowing light. Because I love you in my heart's pavilion, there still is the 
festival of alien bloods mingling into one sublime being. Rhythms of the feet dancing together trample the archaic laws of abomination. Look. Look at the flourish of trumpets unto the horizon. Listen. Listen to the clarion call for equality and amity in the battlefield of luxury and labor. You know, my love. The truth is, immersed as I am in all this, I haven't told you as yet what actually is the profundity of love and why, why I miss you so much even when I exist in you. And yet. In my heart of hearts, I feel the flame of your so-called revolutionary love. Okay, these were the two poems. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And were amazing poems because I love you. I love the way that you teach it and very intense. Intense is the word. And your first poem, sorry, I'm jumping. You were going to say something, please. please. Oh, well, um, Okay, um, I was talking about, you know, um, the theme of uh, today's poetry session. Uh, the first thing that amazes me that uh, I've written it actually, uh, amazes me is that poetry is highly valued in all the countries you have chosen for today's poetry session. Uh, the second thing that strikes me is that in all these lands, poets fall upon the tones of life and their hearts bleed at the sight of human tragedy. In many cases, the poets themselves have fallen prey to the raging conflicts and have lost their lives fighting for the cause of humanity. Poetry, to my mind, is the enormous response to what happens within and around us in the most powerful language. Poets, as the most sensitive and sensible souls, cannot turn a deaf ear or a blind eye to what goes on around, he, around them. Uh, in other words, every poet is a committed soul. Poets are socially committed to what they perceive to be true, just, and right. And this commitment may even lead them to, to, to a heroic sacrifice of their lives. The young Burmese poet, K. Ja Win, who laid down his life in an anti-coup protest in Myanmar on the 3rd of March, 2021, was, for, exa for example, one such poet. Uh, in a Facebook post on the 21st of February, he affirmed his deep conviction in the following final words. He said, even if, even if you and I are apart, I will sacrifice my life for you. Even if we differ uh, in our views, I will lay down my life for you. Okay. Well, uh, when the aesthetics of poetry can reach great heights of commitment, poetry can also be a form of healing dialogue to uh, dialogue. Uh, true, poet, uh, true poetry casts the barriers not only between hostile nations and peoples, uh, but also between compassion and prejudice. This healing touch of poetry is particularly pertinent to the poets of Israel and Palestine. Both Israeli and Palestinian poets like Yehuda Amichai, uh, Mohammed uh, Darwish, uh, Dan Elgamber, uh, Elmager, uh, have endeavored to create curative dialects to their uh, dialogues through their poetry of holding humanity above everything else. The poem In My Shoes by the playwright poet translator Dan Elmager is a shining example here. It tells us how his acquaintance with Walid, uh, an employee in a local grocery store, changed his perception of the Palestinians. He wrote, some people think of Yasir Arafat or Abu Nidal when you mention Palestinians. I think of Walid. And how heartening it's to read Dan Almagar when he reflects having given Walid old clothes and a pair of shoes for his relatives in the village. He writes, how strange to think that someone somewhere in Walid's village near Neblas is wearing my shoes once, not so very long ago. I was 
in his shoes. Uh, we as poets can also feel the travails of life in Colombia, a country that has produced many of the world's best poets and literary figures, and also a country, at the same time, a country of La Violencia uh, that, had, that has endured an undeclared gory war for over half a century. Uh, therefore, quite expectedly, as we have seen here, the poetry are basically uh, a poetry for uh, human rights, a call for a uh, uh, call for the right to life and liber personal liberty. Uh, and, and for all this, what Gabriel Garcia Marquez said in his speech at the 1982 Nobel Prize ceremony still inspires me. He said, uh, to oppression, we respond with life. I'll wind up just uh, a few lines only, uh, two or three lines. Uh, before I wind up, uh, I would like to share with you uh, that uh, um, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi is one of my most favorite poets. I always marvel at his creations, uh, at the creations of this 13th century Afghan Sufi poet. I also marvel at the creations of the 10th century Afghan, Afghan poet Rabia uh, Bolki. Rabia Bolki. She wrote beautiful Persian poems of love. Rabia was a passionate poet who fell in love with a slave and was imprisoned and killed by her brother for her unconventional love. It's indeed surprising to think that, uh, think how daring a poet she was even at that time. Uh, she wrote her last poem with the blood on the wall of her prison cell. Uh, well, while I marvel at this glorious poetic legacy, I shudder at the immeasurable human tragedy extreme fanaticism, mindless violence, loss of women's rights, and the absolute terror of patriarchy in what was once a splendid land steeped in liberal Sufi traditions. Well, uh, this is what I had to say to you, uh, I'm basically on the theme. Thank you so much for uh, bearing with me. Okay, uh, okay. thank you so much. It's an honor and pleasure to listen to you. And I wish that we could hear you more. So maybe we will arrange for that, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in a little time. And uh, you even cut short what uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez said in his Nobel ceremony. But now that you've cut it short, we will call you again for an elaborate talk because I really, I wish I could hear you more. Uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank you so much for you've been a patient hearing it's a pleasure yes. it's a pleasure to be here <laughs> thank you so much so we will we will uh, we will call you again very soon because we are simply not done so we will uh, hear you again at length and uh, we will have many many questions for you. thank you so much and thank you and i wish you i wish you could read in ahomya and we will uh, we will arrange for that as well Okay, so, thank later. you. Thank you so much. We are going to call upon an eminent poetess from Italy. Um, just a second. Just a second. Yes. Tiziana, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Please unmute Hello. yourself. Hello. Okay. Uh, you can hear please. me? Yes. Okay, so thank you for this invitation. Sorry for my flooding um, Wi-Fi line. <laughs> uh, but of course, uh, the name of, of the magazine, uh, uh, Poetry Magazine I, I direct is the Form Affluence. So to be flooding uh, <laughs> is very normal for me, also for my Wi-Fi line. I also saw a poet uh, that is collaborate uh, with ma the magazine Anna Maria Dall'Olio. So yes. ciao. Um, I I read uh, a, um, a poem in Italian. Then, uh, if you want, I can read the French translation, or I can put just on the chat after about uh, resist to resist, but to resist as a salamander, taken from the eminent. Uh, German poet Ingeborg Bachmann, 
we all know of her, uh, is a verse that says, Vedo la salamandra guzzare attraverso tutti i fuochi, non la incalza alcun fremito e non prova alcun dolore. Sorry, I, I can't read in German, but it's about the, the way of the salamander to resist, uh, just uh, getting into the fires, the fire. Vi vedo, sapete? Non fatevi ingannare dal mio sguardo svagato, sfocato. Vi vedo. Ex incendiari o raligi pompieri, veggenti dell'altro ieri. Acqua su fuoco, forbici carta di un'eterna morra. Vi vedo. Imboscati nel bosco disboscato infrattati nel frattale rifratto, imbucati nel buio buchetto ingoiati da un guasto sogno di gloria, infilati a forza nel foyer. E allora? Nulla di personale. Io preferisco come le salamandre resistere, passando svelta tra le fiamme, caparbia di una necessità indicibile in qualsivoglia sociologia codificabile solo in guizzi di luce, in dolorose, mude. I don't know if someone can uh, catch the Italian, a part of Anna Maria Dall'Olio, <laughs> can catch the Italian verses, is one is published in a volume, and there is the French translation, but I don't know if I can read it. Yes, please read the French translation and then just tell us, you know, very briefly, a little bit, you know, what the poem is. Oh, I, I told you, the poem is about uh, this image of the salamander, the animal, it is also a mythical animal, uh, that is told to uh, survive uh, passing through the fire. And so I take this uh, image from a poem of Ingeborg Bachmann about the, the way to resist, but in the way of a salamander. So not avoiding fire, but just jumping into fires. Je vous vois très bien, vous savez. Ne vous laissez pas prendre à mon regard vague et flou. Je vous vois, I see you. Pyromane devenu pompière, visionnaire, démissionnaire, l'eau sur le feu, cycle éternel. Je vous vois, embusqué dans les bois déboisés, enfermé dans les fractales réfractées, retrouvailles dans le trou, englouti par un vain songe de gloire, infiltré par force au foyer. Et alors, rien de personnel. Je préfère, comme les salamandres, résister passant presque à travers les flammes, tenace par une nécessité qui ne décrit nulle sociologie, sociologie, et qui ne se codifie qu'un éclat de lumière, et moins douloureuse. Je vous remercie et je vous invite... Uh, sorry, English. <laughs> I thank you, I thank you. Uh, Panghuri Sina to invite me. Uh, I remember I was in India in uh, 2009. It was a wonderful, wonderful Bengali poetry festival. Uh, I have a lot of souvenirs. Uh, so I invite you to contribute, all of you, to contribute to send uh, one poem, uh, one little bio to the, for uh, this magazine in uh, various languages. Uh, to that is uh, you can check on internet is uh, www.formafluence.net I will write on the chat so ciao thank you. ciao thank you so and I hope uh, and I hope to see you all of you in presence in festival again like in Bengali Poetry Festival or in other festival I was all around the world I hope so. Thank you, man. Honored. Speriamo di vederci in Italia.
Dobbiamo vederci in Italia noi qui. <ride> Speriamo. <ride> Davvero. Thank you so much, uh, thank you for the invite, thank you for all the uh, encouragement, yes, let's hope we'll meet again in this festival, and thank you for the lovely poem, thank you for being as well, and I think now, my next time we if you want to see the poem in the that would be Malika, have you, uh, are you here? Have you joined us? And because you did join, I did admit you. And uh, yes, you're here. So come on, speak up and do read a poem in Bangla. Are you up to it? Are you feeling like reading a poem in Bangla? Come on, speak up, jaldi. Otherwise, I will read mine in Hindi and uh, call upon John after me. And then I think that Dominique is going to be at a, he's going to kill me. Uh, he's a guest of honor. He's a super guest of honor. And, uh, you know, uh, he's like really like a big brother to me. So here I am taking another liberty and uh, going to call him at the very end for the very last word. And uh, I think I will go ahead and read my Malika. Come on. Are you going to say something? I mute yourself. Okay, so um, I am going to ask Dr. Hasina Sultan uh, the name of the Burmese poet he was talking about again, um, because I also wrote um, a poem on a Burmese poet, um, actually two of them. So um, I, I think I am going to read first and then John and then uh, Jamne. So, uh, this is the poem that I wrote and I bear with me, I want to read it in Hindi and then my uh, translation, uh, which is a hurried one. Uh, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right. If you all are familiar with this poet because he was in headlines, then please correct me. Kethi, is that correct? I think I will uh, read the poem and then we can, you know, Kethi Kelly. एक बार फिर सेना ने किया था सत्ता पलट एक बार फिर घर में कैद थी सूखी एक बार फिर सारे अधिकार छीन लिए थे लोगों के सेना ने और एक बार फिर चुप रह जाएगी असल जनता सोचा था मिलिट्री जनता ने किंतु सड़कों पर उमड़ आए बर्मा म्यांमार के बुद्धिजीवी और निकल पड़ा विरोध में सारा समाज अस्त्र उठाए निहत्थों पर दमन कार्यों ने मारा गया आजादी की कविता पढ़ता एक कवि सिर में लगने से बोली खेत थी तुम तो उसकी शहादत पर पढ़ने गए थे मरसिया लेकर बगावत का ऐलान वो दाग सकते हैं हमारे सरों में गोली वो नहीं निकाल सकते हमारे दिल से आजादी का खाब कहा था तुमने क्या उन्होंने निकाल लिया तुम्हारा दिल तुम्हारे सीने से लेकर तुम्हें हिरासत में बोलो कुछ तो बोलो एंड नाउ द इंग्लिश वर्जन द वॉज अ मिलिटरी कू वंस अगेन वंस अगेन सुखी इन हाउस वंस अगेन द राइट ऑफ द पीपल robbed by the army. Once again, the oppressors imagined the public will take it on, but they rebelled. Pouring onto the streets were intellectuals, workers, everybody really, finally transitioning to democracy, fed up with the military coup. The military junta raised its weapons and began to kill poets protesting shot to death, shot in the Dear Kethi, you simply mourned at his funeral, vowing to never surrender. They can kill, but they can never take the dream of independence out of our hearts, you said. Dear Kethi, did they take your heart out in prison? Please say something, 
here. Actually, uh, there was an, there's a cut part this day in his body and uh, probably we will all wait to hear where this goes. So, John, I warmly welcome you to read a poem, our host of the show. Thank you so much. Uh, I just posted it uh, in the chat, a link to the poem I was going to read and then I posted the poem that I'm actually going to read. Our shared humanities. Nothing is deadlier. Dogma. So beautiful. Courage. Riskier. Faith. Seductive. Privilege. More noble and just war, more profane, indifference, crueler, God, no greater truth, kindness, nor greater lie, color, nothing more human, discovery, Wonderful. Thank you for that. And now I am going to leave it to our absolute and final guest of honor, Dominique Williams, to comment on that poem as well. That was a lovely poem. Having said that, over to you. We all are familiar with Dominique Williams, a very gifted, talented poet from Wales. Uh, he's also very active in Sweden, and uh, his poems also take you to Sweden. Uh, very versatile, uh, gifted poet. Warm welcome to you, sir. You're a host of the show. You're a host of so many festivals, a curator of many, many shows. Uh, let me not say too much, just over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Pankuri. Uh, and thank you for reading in Hindi. It was lovely to hear you reading um, this evening. Um, I, I'd read your poem in the, in the, um, in the, thread earlier on. Um, so I'd read the poem, but it was great to, to hear it again in English and particularly to hear it in Hindi. Uh, and I could see so many of the uh, the group, the faces there who were with whom it was resonating when, when you were reading in its original Hindi. Uh, I could saw people nodding away there and, uh, and listening. Fantastic. And thank you, Don, for your wonderful performance too, uh, and for changing things at the last minute um, and, and changing your mind on your poems. It's, um, it's been great to see so many familiar faces here at, at probably what is one of the most important gatherings of Poets Without Borders. Um, and it, it, it's an honour to share my voice with yours in solidarity for so many of these conflicts and erosions and abuses of human rights. Um, many things that we've heard of today have been set against, or of course are set against the backdrop of a world pandemic. Um, and that's an awful thing, um, but it's not as awful as the horrors of, of the deliberate acts of, of humankind, what one man or what woman, one woman does to another. Um, I think when the, the pandemic started, it was a shock. And um, I think we all couldn't believe what was happening. We all wondered about what would happen at the other side. Uh, there were lots of wonderful things said um, a year ago about what the life was going to be like after the pandemic. So many people had so many hopes for a new world, for a, a new normal where, where things would be changed. Um, sadly, I think a lot of world leaders, a lot of governments squashed those dreams that, that people had. Um, and in fact, the, the pandemic for, for many of those governments has been something that they have appropriated um, to help erode human rights and in certain cases to, to abuse human rights further. So my poem is about the pandemic actually. Um, it was written just, just over a year ago um, and it kind of 
has become in, in, in some ways, I suppose, a little prophetic um, because it, it, it it's voices my concerns about what may happen. So this is how it goes. Our mother earth is a tough old bitch, but remember, this is not a war. This is merely a struggle with nature of one species who share this planet. A species that in the year 2020 has shown its unique capacity for compassion. Do not lose that compassion. What have we learned from nature's smallest organism? It has no care for the imagined boundaries of race or gender or nation state. Do not lose that compassion. Our so-called leaders send mixed messages that divide in the name of unity. One may, person may interpret that message in a different way to you, and this is their intent. They fear that we may unlearn their values, that personal wealth surpasses global health. Show tolerance, show understanding. Remember to share that compassion beyond any border, because judgmental, judgmentalism, they will forge into nationalism, petty-minded parochialism into xenophobia. Ordinary people elevated to pedestal for jingoistic rhetoric. Heroes, hidden enemy, front line, battles. This is the vocabulary of hatred. Remember, this is not a war. War is an invention of humankind, a decision by those leaders to encourage one person to kill another. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, sir, for that wonderful, powerful poem. And thank you for your points, wonderful points that you made. Thank you for your lovely words. Kind and wonderful. Thank you so much, dear friends. I really appreciate your patience and your enthusiasm and your encouragement and your love, if I may say so. Thank you, truly humbled, honored, and touched. Thank you so much. Special thanks to uh, Richard out there. Uh, thank you for joining. It was such a pleasure and honor to have you, sir. I'm really, really honored. Thank you. Thank you, Yohana Map. Thank you to everybody. Big thanks to Dominique. Thank you so much. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Don. And goodbye and good night. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.